welcome to Not Starving Artists, the podcast. I'm your host, Brooke Benson, money coach and equity actor. I am your financial cheerleader, here to help you build your financial confidence and have power over your money. The best part, no budgeting or bi-weekly paychecks required. I went from being a broke BFA grad having weekly panic attacks about money to a financially confident, wealth-building actor and business owner. Money gets to feel fun, simple, and sexy, and I am going to show you how. Hi everyone, I am so excited that you are here today because we are going to talk about one of the most pervasive money myths that are in our society today. And it has to do with saving money. There's this narrative out there that saving money is the best thing to do with your money, the most responsible, the most adult. That phrase, spend less, save more. The myth that I want to debunk today is that saving money is somehow better than spending money. That's just flat out not true. That saving money is better than spending money. And this myth makes us feel like shit because this myth is that you should always be putting money away. And if you aren't saving, something has gone wrong. There's something that you need to fix. There's a problem. If a month goes by where you don't save or God forbid you have to spend your savings, that that month wasn't as good, hard air quotes, or it was a worse month, or you weren't as responsible. Saving money somehow got given this moral high ground and spending money got pegged as the problem child, a necessary evil. But what we've forgotten is that money's only purpose is to be used. Its only purpose is to be spent, to be utilized. Physical currency was literally created to buy things, to exchange goods. That is its core function, to be used, to be spent. Now, I have clients who come to me and they're feeling really broke. They're feeling like they're living paycheck to paycheck. They have a lot of scarcity around money, right? And they just feel like they need to make more money and they don't know where it's going and they just don't have enough. And I come to find out, like, meanwhile, they're putting away 30% of every single paycheck that comes in. And they've been doing this for the past 10 years and they've never touched it. And now this account has like $40,000 in it. And I'm like, what about that $40,000 in your savings, right? If you're feeling so broke and so stressed, like, let's look at that money and maybe let's debunk that, that logic that's going on in your brain. And they're like, yeah, but Brooke. That's my savings. I can't spend my savings. Okay, I need you to listen clearly to this next sentence. Listen so clearly. The end goal of everything we do with money is to spend it. The end goal of everything we do with money is to spend it. Saving more, investing more, making more. All of these end goals are to spend more money. When we save more, it's so that future you can spend more, has money to spend. The end goal of saving is to spend it. To invest more, we invest more so that our money can make more money without us doing anything. We love it. And why do we want more money? So that we have money in retirement to spend it, right? We are going to end up spending all that money that we've invested. Why do we want to make more money, have more money? So that one, we can spend more money right now in the day to day, in the month to month, but then also so that we can save more and invest more. And why do we want to save more and invest more? What is it, class? To spend more. Everything we do with money, the end goal is to spend. So spending is not the problem, child. It is not the necessary evil. It's not something you need to cut back on. It is actually the most imperative skill that you learn with your money. The most imperative skill, the most important skill that you will ever learn to cultivate inside of your money. It's not saving skills. It's not investing skills. It is spending skills. This is where your focus should be. How to spend well. How to spend in ways you like. How to spend in ways that make you feel good. 
how to spend without blacking out, how to spend in ways that support present you and future you, and then how to use your intuition to make spending decisions. There's going to be a whole other podcast about intuitive spending and using your intuition to make money management decisions, to manage your money in a way that is purely based on intuition and gut feelings. That's coming. So saving money actually becomes so much easier when you master the skill of spending. You'll actually be excited about giving money to future you to spend, because that's what saving is, rather than feeling like you have to, or it's like the responsible thing to do, or the adult thing to do. It's going to end up coming from desire, because as you cultivate this skill of spending, you're learning to really enjoy your money, enjoy spending your money. You trust yourself in your spending decisions. So then putting money towards future you in saving and investments becomes really easy and exciting, because you know what feeling good about your spending feels like. And again, the end goal of saving and investing is to spend it. Okay. But the thing is, you all are trying to like reverse engineer those skills. So you're like, I just need to get really good at saving and really good at investing and really good at putting money away. And I'm just going to like blindly do it. And we're going to force ourselves to do it because that's the good thing. That means I'm good at money if I can do those things. And you ignore feeling really good about your spending. You ignore really trying to get into the weeds with your own spending habits and your feelings around spending and your intuition around spending. You ignore the skill of spending and you focus so hard on saving and investing. And then what happens in the future? What happens in the future? Let's fast forward all the way to retirement. You spent your whole life, you've gotten so good putting money away for future you right? You are a savings master. You are an investing master, okay? But you've just ignored the skill of spending. Get to retirement years, what's going to happen? What are you going to do, right? When all of a sudden, now your entire financial life has no income. You have no money coming to you and no reason to be putting money into savings. Now is your time to utilize that money that you have been putting away for years and years and years and years. But if you have never cultivated this skill of spending, you are going to freeze. You are going to panic. You are going to stay in a job or keep working for so much longer than you have to, or so much longer than you want to, because you're like, but I need the income, but I need to keep saving. I need to keep saving because you never calibrated the skill of spending. You are going to have so much money anxiety when you get to those retirement years, or let me say your work optional years. When you get to the point where you can no longer work if you don't want to, like you can tap out of needing to make money. That doesn't mean you have to like sit on a lazy boy and watch TV all the time. But when you like don't need to work anymore, you're going to have so much anxiety because like you don't know how to trust yourself with your spending. You don't know how to spend money well and like spend money in a way that feels good because the only thing that you've equated with feeling good about money is saving, is putting it away. So when that's taken away, now all of a sudden you're going to start feeling like shit about your money. Okay. Money was meant to flow. It was not meant to continue to get stacked away, hidden someplace safe and someplace dark. Like that's like Gollum vibes, right? For my Lord of the Rings people. And like, if that's how you've been saving money, right? Where you're just like hoarding like a dragon, you know, protecting its eggs, right? Of like, no, that's my savings. We're saving. Anytime you need to or want to spend your savings, there's like internal golem screaming, like trying to take the ring away from him. It's like, no, 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 don't take my savings. That's what's happening inside of your brain. And that's not a healthy or sustainable way to manage your money and to interact with money. So here's what I want to offer you. I want to offer you money seasons, seasons of saving, seasons of spending, and seasons of sustaining, seasons. You don't always have to be saving money and stacking it away. You can have seasons where that is your focus. And then you will also have seasons where spending is the focus and seasons where you are just sustaining and vibing and in maintenance mode. 
So you'll have seasons where the vibe is putting money towards future you. You'll have seasons where the vibe is using that money that past you set aside for current you. I want to say that again. You're going to have seasons where the vibe is using the money that past you set aside for current you because that's what savings are putting money away for future you. And then when future you arrives, then it's the money that past you set aside for current you. That's what saving is. You will also have seasons where your savings are set to go. Savings are stacked, feeling really good about the money that was put aside for future you. And you don't have any big expenditures. Like that future version of you who's going to want to spend those savings, she's not quite here yet, right? So you're in this vibey maintenance sustaining mode with the month to month money that's coming in and going out sustaining energy. So these seasons, this mimics life, just like you're not always going to be in hustle and grind mode. And like, you won't always be in rest chill mode. You're going to have seasons. You're going to have chapters. You're going to be flowing in and out of hustle and grind and resting and relaxing. And if you don't move out of those seasons, then something has gone wrong. You cannot sustain a hustle culture, a hustle lifestyle for your entire life, or you will literally die early or burn out, right? Same with resting and relaxing. We can't just always be in like, we're we're chilling, we're doing nothing, right? We can't always be in that mode because then like we're not actually living the life we were meant to live and that we're excited about living, right? It has to be seasons. You have to have seasons. Money is no different because life is cyclical. The literal earth, the literal seasons on earth show us this, right? Fall turns into winter, turns into spring, turns into summer, we're getting clues on how we should be managing our money from the literal earth, from how literally the rest of our life functions in seasons, in chapters. So I want to give you a specific example from my life to illustrate how these seasons work and how these seasons function. So I'm going to talk about 2021, 2021. My partner and I were living in Denver. We had just made this big move from Florida to a new apartment in a new city. We drove across the country. And that was a huge season of spending for us because we were increasing our rent by something like 40%. We were living in a nicer apartment. We were living in Denver, which is a higher cost of living city. We were furnishing an entirely new apartment, right? My partner was transitioning into a new job, right? I was getting my business off the ground. So we were in a season of spending. Then we get to Denver. We've spent all the things. We've gotten the couch. We've furnished the place, put the deposits down. And we then moved into a season of sustaining, a season of maintenance where my nervous system couldn't just jump back in to like, okay, and now we're going to replenish the savings and now we're going to save, save, save. And now we have to, because we just spent all this money. Whew, no, I was like, all right, that was a lot to like spend a lot of money on this new big life move. My nervous system needs some time to chill. We are going to just vibe in maintenance mode, right? I still had my emergency fund, right? So I knew that I was good on that front, but I was like, we're not, we're not going to rush this. We are just going to enjoy this new city. We're going to get our footing, right? Of where we are, what our expenses look like, right? We're going to enjoy this new city. So we moved into a season of sustaining. And then at the end of that year, my man and I were sitting in the hot tub and we were like, I think this is not the place we want to set roots. I think we are meant to be in New York. And we knew we were going to move to New York for a while. Um, but this finally felt like the time. At the end of this lease in Denver, we're going to move to New York City. So that was at the end of the year. So at the start of 2022, all of a sudden, I'm getting really excited about moving into a season of saving because I see that vision of that New York move, that New York apartment, the furniture we're going to have in that apartment, the lifestyle we are going to live in New York. And then I'm like, ooh, I'm really excited about putting money towards that future me who is making that big move. So then I moved into a season of saving because I had this thing on the, on the forefront of my brain of like, we're moving to the city, right? So I'm moving into the season of saving and then the move comes. 
Moving time happens, moving to New York City, and we go into a season of spending again because we are getting all new furniture, again, new deposit, we're increasing our rent price again, probably about 30% this time. So we're increasing our lifestyle, we're moving to a higher cost of living city. Um, my partner's starting a new job, but there was like a delay in the paychecks, right? Um, so there was just all of this spending that needed to happen during that season. And we knew that was coming. So during that season, we were like, ooh, we're in a season of spending, how fun, how fun, how fun. And we knew that there was an end to it. Because then after we moved in, the first couple of weeks, living our best New York life, going out all the time, do, doing all the New York things, we moved into a season of sustaining again. I was really excited. Again, my nervous system needed time to settle in this new city, in this new lifestyle, in this new way of, of living, right? And again, after a huge season of spending, I needed time to breathe and just enjoy my money and have a blast using the money that was coming in and letting it go out and not worrying too much about stacking, 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 okay? So then right now, as we are recording this podcast, I am getting really excited about moving into another season of saving. It just started to hit me like two weeks ago because my partner and I got a new couch. So excited about our new couch. We bought the, the person who we did a lease break with for this uh, apartment. They let us buy their couch that was here, but it's not our dream couch. So we've just bought a couch that really excites us. And now we're getting excited about the other things we wanna do inside of our apartment to make it just really feel homey. I got my eyes on some coaches and programs for my personal life that I'm excited about investing in. I'm gonna do a closet revamp. I've got a branding photo shoot that I'm gonna fly out somewhere to do. Um, there's some trips and vacations that are on the docket. So now that my brain is starting to look at those future things and my nervous system has had enough time to breathe after that huge season of spending, that huge life change, I'm getting excited about putting money towards future me again, because I've got these very specific things that I want to put that money towards, right? So now I'm moving into a season of saving. So do you see how these seasons are cyclical? Do you see how, and, and my life has revolved around a lot of big moves, like physically geographical moves, which is how my seasons of saving and spending and sustaining have kind of revolved around. But you don't need to have a big move to have seasons of saving and spending and sustaining. You know, you can have a time where you need to quit your job or you're in between gigs where you are in this season of spending, right? You're using your savings or you are in a season where like your mental health and your emotional well-being, like you just need to be in maintenance mode, sustaining mode. That's great. And then you're also going to have seasons where you're excited about saving. It doesn't have to be for a big move, but just like I said, like I've got a coaching investment on my mind. I've got a vacation on my mind. I've got new shit that I want to buy in my apartment. Like we've got all that stuff playing in my brain that's causing a season of saving to pop in. Now, what I want to be very clear about, what I want you to, to hear as I'm sharing the, this story of my life is that everything is coming from desire, desire, gut led intuition. Okay. Nothing in me is saying like, okay, and now you have to move into a season of saving. You just had a season of spending. So now it's time to save, 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 Brooke. Now it's time for that season to kick in. No, I let my body tell me when, when it's time to move into the next season and everything is coming from desire. I was so excited to spend a lot of fucking money on our move to the city. I was so excited to be in a in a season of maintenance in the city, playing with money, just not worrying about anything else except just enjoying money in this new city that we moved to. I was so, I am now so excited about moving into a season of saving because I got all this shit on my brain where I'm like, and that's what that money is for. And I'm putting that money away for this specific thing. And that makes me excited. It's all coming from desire. Desire, desire, desire. And that's what I want for you. Nothing should feel like you have to rely on willpower or shoulds or responsibility to lead the way. It should all feel fun and exciting and like you should feel pulled toward it, towards it. The other big thing about this is that I trust myself to know that there's another season around the corner. Just like we trust this earth to have seasons, right? We trust that winter's gonna come after fall, right? 
So you need to cultivate that trust of like, I can trust myself that I will feel led to come into another season when the time is right. When my money tells me it's time. We're not trying to hold on to a season that is passing, right? Like we're not trying to hold on to a season of saving as we're moving into a season of spending because it's like, no, but I feel best when I save and I don't want to spend and I don't want to spend. Fuck, 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 fuck. That energy is like, trying to hold on to summer and you're wearing shorts when it's 30 degrees outside, that's not going to be fun. What's going to make it so much more enjoyable is if as the weather changes, you're like, all right, weather, I'm here. I'm putting that sweater on. I'm putting these galoshes on. And you can trust that you know you're going to get to wear those shorts again. They're coming and it's going to feel so much more fun to wear those shorts when it's warmer, knowing that you haven't worn them in a while, right? Like how much more fun instead of just wearing shorts all year long, forever and ever and ever, right? That was my vibe in Florida. Part of the reason I wanted to move away. I wanted seasons. We crave seasons as human beings. And I also want to say that you're allowed to have favorite parts of each season and you're allowed to have favorite seasons. I'm going to be real with you. My favorite season is sustaining seasons. Oh, it is so fun. And I think this comes from my artist background of never really feeling like I could comfortably be in a sustaining season. So it feels so incredibly lovely and wonderful and safe to my body and my nervous system and my brain to be in a season of sustaining where I just can like have my money come in and I play with it and I spend it and I utilize it and I know like I have savings in the bank for future me when that time comes and then we will spend that money but that sustaining vibe oh it's so much fun for me but that doesn't mean I don't like the other seasons I learned to love the other seasons too the thing that I love about being in a in a saving season is that it is so fun to see big ass numbers in my account. I'm like, you did that, Brooke. That looks amazing. Hell yeah. Look at those thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that are in that bank account. That's powerful. That's some badass money shit, right? That is so fun for me to be a part of. And then when I'm in a spending season, same thing on the flip side. I'm like, Brooke, did you just spend $15,000 in cash on a coaching investment? Past you could never. Oh, like it just feels so badass and so luxurious. And like moving into this new apartment, like how fun that I have so much money to play with when I'm furnishing my new apartment. Like, do you see how I'm selling myself on all the reasons why I love each season? And yes, I have my favorite. We all have our favorite season, right? Winter is your favorite season. Summer is your favorite season. But we love parts of all of them, right? Or you need to find parts of all of them that you love. So you get to have that too. And I've worked with a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients who are making big moves to dream cities and dream apartments. That's something that just has happened to be a part of a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients' lives. And a huge focus that we work on is getting comfortable in a season of spending because our society has really only taught us to feel comfortable in seasons of saving right? Seasons of putting money away. That's the safest. That's the most responsible. That's the best. So our work is getting really comfortable in like a season of spending is okay. Nothing's gone wrong. Your past self put this money into your bank account for current you to use, to move, to up level, to do the damn thing. Because that is what it's there for. That is what it's there for. The end goal of everything we do with money is to use it, to spend it, to enjoy it. So I want you to think about what season you are currently in right now. What season are you currently in right now? Having this vocabulary is going to be really, really helpful for your nervous system and also your brain, right? To stop thinking that something's wrong with you if you're not saving money every single month or every single week or every single paycheck, right? I want you to have the word, right? Think about what season you're in and then get really comfortable saying that that's the season you're in. If you're in a season of spending right now, call it that. You're in a season of spending. That is correct. That is correct. That's the season you're in. Just like we're in the season of, what are we technically in now? Fall, or, or I mean, <laughs> fall, winter, 
spring. I'm not quite sure when the cutoff is. Um, I think we're still in winter, right? But like, just like that, that's just the fact. So right now, whatever season you're in, that's just the fact. Nothing is wrong. There is nothing to fix. And how can you trust yourself that the next season is on the horizon? And you can trust yourself to know when you are going to start rolling into that season. It really helps you get comfortable and your brain stop telling you like, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong to be spending this much money or to be saving this much money or to not be focusing on spending or saving a lot of money. Like we're just enjoying our money. Something's gone wrong. No, you're just in a season. This is how life works. Nothing has gone wrong. There's nothing to fix. You are just in a season. Thanks so much for tuning in. Come join me on Instagram for more on how to build a simple, sexy relationship with your money. My Instagram handle is at not starving artists. And if you want to dive deeper with me, head to the show notes to learn more about one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you love this episode, subscribe, leave a review and share it with a friend that you want to get rich with.